Hello my friends, today we're back in Luminar Neo and we will be talking about color grading with overlays. Also as a thank you for supporting this channel, I will be giving you seven free overlays. Is this seven over here? I created this in Photoshop for you guys. They are pretty big overlays, 10,000 pixels by 10,000 pixels. So it should work with all your images, no matter of the size. We will be working on this example and let's see how we would use an overlay. I already loaded all seven over here that you will get if you go into the description below. And if you do not know how to load an overlay, you go to the layers, go to the plus and then load image and you will find your overlays into downloads or your desktop, whatever you loaded and you import it that way. Once you import it, they will show up into my images over here and then you just double click on them and that will apply them as a layer into your, you know, layer dialog. I'm going to delete this one because I already have it over here. So how do we use overlays to uh, color grade? Well, let's see. We'll start with every one of them. Let's look at them first and see what you're getting. This one, it's just a brown one. Uh, hold on. Let me put the blending mode to normal. So this is a brown overlay. And when you change the blending mode to soft light or overlay, you get this beautiful color grading. You see that? This is the before and after, before and after. That was in soft light. If I go to overlay, it's a little bit even punchier and we probably need to reduce the opacity and also maybe mask her face a little bit. You don't want to mask it completely out because then it's just going to look like it doesn't belong in the image, but you will go to brush and go to erase and maybe with strength of 50%, you can just, you know, erase it from the face, the skin. And look at that. Now this is before and after, before and after. That's how we color graded using this brown layer. I'm going to reduce the opacity at 0% and go to the orange one. I'm going to take you just through a few of these ones and then I will show you some problems you might run into when you're working with uh, overlay layers. This is the orange one. You guys saw me using it in so many videos. This is a normal blending mode and if I change it to soft light, then we get these golden tones. And let's see, this is the before and after, before and after. I use this one a lot when I want to enhance sunsets and, you know, anywhere you want to create that golden tone. So that was the orange one. Next one is the gradient one. This is like a purple to peachy kind of color. And this one can give some pretty nice results too. There it is at 100% soft light. So this is the before and after, before and after. And then we have another gradient, a cooler tone, because you have a lot of warm tones that are great for the fall, for the, you know, summer sunsets and whatever. But there you go. This is another cool tone one. And this is in soft light. You have to reduce the opacity. And then, of course, you will mask it off her skin so she doesn't have blue toned skin. You can also mess around with other blending modes, like maybe multiply or hard light. But usually soft light and overlay will give you the best results. So that was the gradient, the cool tone gradient. Then we have a warm tone gradient, mostly oranges. This is what it looks like. Oranges, peachy color. And if we change it to soft light, this is the result it gives. This is the before and after, before and after. Of course, you don't have to apply it to the whole image. Like I said, you could just erase it from uh, the face and apply it to the image. Or another way to apply overlays is for, let's say we'll go to masking, we'll go to brush and we'll take paint to paint with. And I'll make the brush really, really small. Well, now we can just add some golden tone as highlights in her hair. So we're painting that, you know, gradient only in her hair. And this is the, I might increase the opacity to it just so you can see it better. And now this is the before and after, before and after. You see how we just like accentuated the hair. Of course, I should have taken the brush and make it a lot smaller just so it really looks like highlights, but I just quickly painted in. And then you have this blue one. I'm not going to demonstrate it. I'm just showing you it's a blue one. And then you have this green, kind of like a bluish, like cool tone green. And you can use that as well. 
Now here is a problem you might run into when you're trying to work with overlay. I have the same image over here and let's say I only want to color grade the background. I want my subject to stay exactly the way it is. How can I do that? So let's bring in an overlay. We'll use this brown one. I will fill it to screen. Opacity at 100%. We'll change the blending mode to soft light. And we'll just, you know, choose the amount that we want. Now, I think this looks great over the whole image. Maybe, you know, erase at 50% over the face. But let's say, let's pretend you only want to apply this to the background. How do you do that? Because if you go onto masking and you select the overlay, there is no, the mask AI is not going to recognize any human because really it's nothing there. It's just a blank colored layer. So there's no human that it can found. So then you might think, well, can you go into the other layer and select the subject? Yes, you can. But here's what's happening. If I go here, go to mask AI and select our subject, it's going to mask our human and we're losing the background. You see what happened? Now we have no background because we masked it out. And we also cannot go to the mask and to mask action and copy this mask because we do not have the choice to copy this mask and apply it to our overlay. Does that make sense? Stay with me, please. So how do we solve this problem? I am going to reset this layer and this is how we will solve it. We have our overlay, we have our subject. If we want to not affect the subject, the thing we need to do is to go into our layer and apply this exact same image as a layer on top. Now with our top layer selected, then you will go into mask, mask AI, and now you can select your subject. So essentially what we did, we completely separate the foreground, the person from the background. You see, we have our person and if I hide these two layers now, oops, this is just at 50%, I'm gonna put it at 100. So on the top layer, we only have the subject because we do not want it to affect that. That's why we have that layer on top. And then on the bottom, we have the whole image and then we have our overlay layer in between and this will just affect the layer only affects the layers below. So now let's say we want to color grade this a little bit more and we want to we want to add another overlay but this time we want it to affect the background and the subject at a lower opacity that way it kind of blends in and it just gives you that more rich look. Well then we'll go into layers and we'll choose the same overlay. You can choose a different color it doesn't have to be the same. I will fill it to screen, I will increase the opacity at 100%, change the blending mode to soft light, and then reduce the opacity to something that looks good. Let's say something like this looks great. So, but now maybe it's too much on the skin. Maybe let's go even more aggressive, something like that. Well, now you don't wanna completely remove it from the skin because then it's just gonna look weird, but you can go into masking, go to brush, and with strength of only 50%, I am going to remove it from the skin. And, oops, you know what, you guys? I painted instead of erasing it. So make sure you are on the erase, because right now we only applied this um, overlay layer to the face instead of the background. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to reset this layer property. I'll go back to properties and fill it change the blending mode to soft light and now I can go into masking and make sure with the brush I'm on the erase straight at 50% and now I can erase it from the skin and that looks better so let's see our image now this is the before and after before and after and that just kind of pulls it everything together now let's talk about how can we change the color of these overlays. Like that, you know, brown worked great with that image, but what if you have a different image and you need to change the color? I'm just going to use this, um, let's use it on an example. And I will show you. 
Let's use this example. And then we'll go to edit and we'll choose a solid. I'll choose the bloom. And then onto layer properties, I'll put it on the 100%, I'll fill the screen. So this is our overlay and it's blue. If I change the blending mode to soft light, you will see it kind of cools the image. This is at 100%, you would not use it at 100%, you would lower it. But this one, let's stay in track, we're getting distracted. Let's go back to 100%, I'll put it at normal. To change the color, let's say I do not want the blue, I want an orange tone or something green or something else. Well, with make sure your overlay layer is selected, go into color and then go into hue shift and you can shift the hue to whatever color you want. And you can manipulate this layer and, you know, add, if you want to make it darker, lighter, more saturated, you can add saturation. You can reduce saturation, you can make it, you know, a gray layer, you can do whatever you want for, you know, your image. So let's see, what do we want to use? Let's use something more orangey, maybe we want to increase, increase the saturation. Now we have an orange layer. And if we go now to layer properties and change the blending mode to soft light, well now we have a warm tone, even though our overlay, it's still blue, but we changed the hue of it, so now we have an orange layer. So there you go, that's the before, that's after, before and after. If you don't like the way the orange look onto the water, you can always just paint and, you know, with paint brush tool this time, just paint it onto your boats, make the boats more orange, and then take a blue tone overlay and do it over the water. And that will give you maybe a more beautiful result before and after this boat, before and after. And this is how you would work with overlays. You can change them. The gradient ones are interesting. I will show you the gradient, how to change the color. Because really, I used to like fill my libraries with all kinds of overlays, but you really only need like a couple of them, a handful of them, because you can always modify them. So when you have an overlay like this, if you want to change the tones in it because you do not want to have a purple and orange image, you can always go into toning. And then you see you have shadows and highlights and the shadows are down here on the bottom and the highlights are on the top. So if I go to highlights and increase the amount at 100% and saturation at 100%, now I can change the hue. Let's make it blue at the top. So I'll choose that. I can reduce the saturation. I like it. I kind of like the full saturation. And then I can go to shadows. I'll increase saturation. I can choose something else for the shadows. So I can choose blue. I can choose pink. So let's say something like that. So this was our image before and after. Before and after. We can, of course, go into develop and maybe at color, we can reduce saturation or increase saturation. We can change the temperature tint to it. You can work with all the tools you have in Luminar Neo and change these gradients and these overlays however you please. And you are not stuck with the ones that I gave you. But this should be plenty for every project you have. I hope this was useful. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I'll see you in my next video.